here's my position. I need you a lot more than you need me tonight. I am mad as hell. I am angry at America. I'm angry at this election. And I'm scared to death that America will be destroyed by this next administration. And I am not kidding. I am scared to death of Donald Trump. He is a racist. He is an anti-Semite. He is a man who is filled with hate. And it was a person that we should loathe, not elect president of the United States. That's how I feel. You need to help me because I'm trying to get over this. Being civil has nothing to do with my thinking at this moment. Trying to get through another day thinking of Donald Trump waving his hand down Pennsylvania Avenue by January 21st makes me sick. And John, uh, John C. Scott in 2009 called me, uh, John, I think he called me the most despicable human in, in, on earth on the, his election night, and I was driving uh, to the election party at the Republican Party, and I was listening to you and Ray Carroll, and I'd just been on your show the day before, the day before I was the nicest guy in the world, and that day I was the most despicable scum on earth, could not even be any worse than I could be. And when I was elected uh, in 2012, Dr. John Pettico was our superintendent, and uh, one thing he said to me that I haven't forgot was that there's really six board members and that uh, when there's a division between the board, in our case a three to two division, that third, that sixth board member who is with the, the board the minority, if you will, is the media. And then that board minority leverages and works with the media to, <coughs> to again, leverage their viewpoint and their, their perspectives. And I think we've really seen that um, and I've also learned, most importantly, how I need to behave myself. I have Early on, you saw that Donald Trump was a horrible person because he did this, 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 and this. Okay, well, then you found out later that Hillary is a horrible person because she did these things. That didn't start yesterday. And sad to say, Steve, well, I did it in our campaign in 2009 to, to Councilman Fimbers. I sent out some mailers personally that were not um, very flattering, if you will. They were quite negative and, and damaging to him, and that was the intent of it. Um, I took ownership of that, even though I didn't agree with my campaign team in those in those uh, in sending those out. Especially one of them was way over the top. And John, and so you can always redeem yourself. After you say and do something stupid, and I'm going to be the most to be a test of because I do not. Uh, just listen every Saturday. Can we say something stupid? You can call in and disagree with me. I like the debate of it. I like to have the discussion. I like to get to the resolution of it. I, I, I like to have the disagreement, but I want to get to a solution. And I think that we, we lost that. Um, so in 2009, that went out and that happened. Well, 2010, we had an election and Jesse Kelly won, and I remember Gabrielle Giffords, the night Jesse Kelly won the election, the very first thing that came out was a, a little clip, going back to the media, the media clipped Jesse Kelly, just like we're being recorded here tonight, saying that he was going to slash and burn on Medicare or Social Security. And that 1201, when, that, when Jesse Kelly won that election or was declared the winner, boom, there comes that advertising across every source of media that was out there. Very well placed by, by Jesse's opponent. Gabriel yeah, Giffords played that extremely well. Nature of the game. Very subtle, very uh, not over the top, but it crescendoed. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse, and here we are today. If it gets any worse, I, I don't know where we go from here. We're at a 50-50 split, which really isn't true. They say there's the left and the right. If that was true, then why today is so much of the establishment right freaking out over this man who hasn't even taken office yet? The left is freaking out over right cause because their team just lost. You know, they had control of the ball for the last eight years. And they could do pretty much what they wanted for the last year because the president was in power. That switched. And it changes DC. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. But it's really important for the community part of the conversation to occur at the tables and then uh, at the end. But it, it, it kept getting worse, and we kept getting divided. In 2010, we had the Tea Party events, and our city manager called me a political terrorist at the time because I didn't agree with him. 
It's how we how we treat our opponents or how we treat the other side or the, the ones we disagree with. That's what it's all about. If you can have a good discussion without going over the top and calling people names, then you can get to a solution. And that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that we maintain our composure, maintain our cool, and have a discussion and get to a solution to the problem. At the end of the day, if you look around the room, I guarantee there's one thing we all have in common. We want to go home, pay our bills, take care of our family, put food on our table, and make sure that we have a nice, happy life. It's that simple. No matter what color you are, what you do, or how you do it. I don't care if you dig ditches for a living or if you're a CEO. At the end of the day, you all do the same thing. So, I hope at the end of this we can all get along and we can all come to an amicable solution to what we disagree about. I can't believe we've done this to this country. So that's where I am. Civility, you're going to have to talk to me tonight. You're going to have to ask me to try to find some way that I'm going to be able to deal with the anger and fear that I feel about what happened on November 8, 2016. So I need your help. You don't need mine. Here's what we have in Tucson, Arizona. And here is the opportunity you have to listen to both sides of the political discourse. There are four right-wing stations, radio stations in Tucson, Arizona. 1450 went from Spanish to Glenn Beck and Michael Savage, who's absolutely fat, dumb, crazy. And then you have KBY, which is reasonable right-wing religious talk. You have KNST, which is Hannity and, and Limbaugh. And then you have The Truth, which I've never figured out what that is, but I know it's very conservative. Four conservative stations. We have put on the air a progressive talk station. It's at 12, 10 a.m. I want you to listen to it. It features Bill Press, Stephanie Miller. It features uh, Tom Hartman, Alan Gomes, probably names you would associate with a liberal voice in Tucson or anywhere in America. Listen to it. It's the other side of the coin. These people that are on this radio station speaking from all over the country are trying to deal with the fear that I have and the absolute anguish and anger that I feel after this election. I can't believe we've done this to this country. I am more than willing to wait and see because I have no other choice but to wait and see. So don't talk to me tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not have much to say other than what I've said. I need to listen to you. So when we have a gathering together, help me out, because I think we're all in trouble. Maybe you can convince me it's not as bad as I think it is. So thank you.